Portal, video game, from Wikipedia the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Portal, video game. Portal is a 2007 puzzle platform game developed and published by Valve. It was released in a bundle, the Orange Box, for Windows, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and has been since ported to other systems, including Mac OS X, Linux and Android via Nvidia Shield. Portal consists primarily of a series of puzzles that must be solved by teleporting the player's character and simple objects using the Aperture Science handheld portal device, a device that can create interspatial portals between two flat planes. The player character, Chell, is challenged and taunted by an artificial intelligence named GLaDOS, genetic life form and disk operating system, to complete each puzzle in the Aperture Science Enrichment Center using the portal gun with the promise of receiving cake when all the puzzles are completed. The game's unique physics allows kinetic energy to be retained through portals, requiring creative use of portals to manoeuvre through the test chambers. The gameplay element is based on a similar concept from the game Narbacula Drop. Many of the team members from the DigiPen Institute of Technology who worked on Narbacula Drop were hired by Valve for the creation of Portal, making it a spiritual successor to the game. Portal was acclaimed as one of the most original games of 2007, despite criticisms of its short duration and limited story. The game received praise for its originality, unique gameplay and dark story, with a humorous series of dialogue. GLaDOS, voiced by Ellen McLean in the English language version, received acclaim for her unique characterisation, and the end credits song Still Alive, written by Jonathan Coulton for the game, was praised for its original composition and humorous twist. Portal is often cited as one of the greatest video games ever made. Excluding Steam download sales, over 4 million copies of the game have been sold since its release, spawning official merchandise from Valve, including plush companion cubes, as well as fan recreations of the cake and portal gun. A standalone version, titled Portal Still Alive, was published by Microsoft Game Studios and released on the Xbox Live Arcade service in October 2008 as an exclusive title for Xbox 360, which added 14 puzzles to the gameplay. A sequel, Portal 2, released in 2011, expanded on the storyline, adding several new gameplay mechanics and a cooperative multiplayer mode. Section 1. Gameplay in Portal, the player controls the protagonist, Chell, from a first-person perspective, as she is challenged to navigate through a series of test chambers using the Aperture Science handheld Portal device, or Portal Gun, under the watchful supervision of the artificial intelligence, GLaDOS. The Portal Gun can create two distinct Portal Ends, orange and blue. The portals create a visual and physical connection between two different locations in three-dimensional space. Neither end is specifically an entrance or exit. All objects that travel through one portal will exit through the other. An important aspect of the game's physics is momentum redirection and conservation. As moving objects pass through portals, they come through the exit portal at the same direction that the exit portal is facing and with the same speed with which they pass through the entrance portal. For example, a common manoeuvre is to place a portal some distance below the player on the floor, jump down through it, gaining speed in free fall, and emerge through the other portal on a wall, flying over a gap or other obstacle. This process of gaining speed and then redirecting that speed towards another area of a puzzle allows the player to launch objects, or Chell, over great distances, both vertically and horizontally, referred to as flinging by Valve. As GLaDOS puts it, in layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. 
If portal ends are not on parallel planes, the character passing through is reoriented to be upright with respect to gravity after leaving a portal end. Chell and all other objects in the game that can fit through the portal ends will pass through the portal. However, a portal shot cannot pass through an open portal. It will simply deactivate or create a new portal in an offset position. Creating a portal end instantly deactivates an existing portal end of the same colour. Moving objects, glass, special wall surfaces, liquids or areas that are too small will not be able to anchor portals. Chell is sometimes provided with cubes that she can pick up and use to climb on or to hold down large buttons that open doors or activate mechanisms. Particle fields, known as emancipation grills, occasionally called fizzlers in the developer commentary, exist at the end of all and within some test chambers. When passed through, they will deactivate any active portals and disintegrate any object carried through. These fields also block attempts to fire portals through them. Although Chell is equipped with mechanised heel springs to prevent damage from falling, she can be killed by various other hazards in the test chambers, such as turret guns, bouncing balls of energy, and toxic liquid. She can also be killed by objects hitting her at high speeds, and by a series of crushers that appear in certain levels. Unlike most action games at the time, there is no health indicator. Chell dies if she is dealt a certain amount of damage in a short period, but returns to full health fairly quickly. Some obstacles, such as the energy balls and crushing pistons, deal fatal damage with a single blow. GameSpot noted in its initial review of Portal that many solutions exist for completing each puzzle, and that the gameplay gets even crazier and the diagrams shown in the trailer showed us some incredibly crazy things that you can attempt. Two additional modes are unlocked upon the completion of the game that challenge the player to work out alternative methods of solving each test chamber. Challenge maps are unlocked near the halfway point, and advanced chambers are unlocked when the game is completed. In challenge mode, levels are revisited, with the added goal of completing the test chamber either with as little time, with the fewest portals, or with the fewest footsteps possible. In advanced mode, certain levels are made more complex with the addition of more obstacles and hazards. Section 2. Synopsis. Section 2.1. Characters. The game features two characters. The player-controlled silent protagonist, named Chell, and GLaDOS, genetic life form and disk operating system, a computer artificial intelligence that monitors and directs the player. In the English language version, GLaDOS is voiced by Ellen McLean, though her voice has been altered to sound more artificial. The only background information presented about Chell is given by GLaDOS. The credibility of these facts, such as Chell being adopted, an orphan, and having no friends, is questionable at best, as GLaDOS is a liar by her own admission. In the Lab Rat comic, created by Valve to bridge the gap between Portal and Portal 2, Chell's records reveal she was ultimately rejected as a test subject for having too much tenacity. The main reason Doug Ratman, a former employee of Aperture Science, move Chell to the top of the test queue. Section 2.2. Setting. Portal takes place in the Aperture Science Laboratories Computer Aided Enrichment Centre, Aperture Science for short, which is a research facility responsible for the creation of the portal gun. According to information presented in Portal 2, the location of the complex is in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Aperture Science exists in the same universe as the Half-Life series, although connections between the two franchises are limited to references. Information about the company, developed by Valve for creating the setting of the game, is revealed during the game and via the real-world promotional website. According to the Aperture Science website, Cave Johnson founded the company in 1943 for the sole purpose of making shower curtains for the US military. However, after becoming mentally unstable from moon rock poisoning in 1978, 
Johnson created a three-tier research and development plan to make his organisation successful. The first two tiers, the counter Heimlich manoeuvre, a manoeuvre designed to ensure choking, and the Take-A-Wish Foundation, a programme to give the wishes of terminally ill children to adults in need of dreams, were commercial failures and led to an investigation of the company by the US Senate. However, when the investigative committee heard of the success of the third tier, a person-sized ad hoc quantum tunnel through physical space, with a possible application as a shower curtain, it recessed permanently and gave Aperture Science an open-ended contract to continue its research. The development of GLaDOS, an artificially intelligent research assistant and disk operating system, began in 1986 in response to Black Mesa's work on similar portal technology. A presentation seen during gameplay reveals that GLaDOS was also included in a proposed bid for de-icing fuel lines, incorporated as a fully functional disk operating system that is arguably alive, unlike Black Mesa's proposal, which inhibits ice nothing more. Roughly 13 years later, work on GLaDOS was completed, and the untested AI was activated during the company's Bring Your Daughter to Work Day in May 2000. Immediately after activation, the facility was flooded with deadly neurotoxin by the AI. Events of the first Half-Life game occur shortly after that, presumably leaving the facility forgotten by the outside world due to apocalyptic happenings. Walpore, in describing the ending of Portal 2, affirmed that the Combine invasion, chronologically taking place after Half-Life and before Half-Life 2, had occurred before Portal 2's events. The areas of the enrichment centre that Chell explores suggest that it is part of a massive research installation. At the time of events depicted in Portal, the facility seems to be long deserted, although most of its equipment remains operational without human control. During its development, Half-Life 2 Episode 2 featured a chapter set on Aperture Science's icebreaker ship Borealis, but this was abandoned and removed before release. Section 2.3, Plot. Portal's plot is revealed to the player via audio messages or announcements from GLaDOS and visual elements inside rooms found in later levels. According to The Final Hours of Portal 2, the year is established to be somewhere in 2010, 12 years after Aperture Science has been abandoned. The game begins with Chell waking up from a stasis bed and hearing instructions and warnings from GLaDOS and artificial intelligence about upcoming tests. Chell enters into distinct chambers that introduce players to the game's mechanics sequentially. GLaDOS's announcements serve as instructions to Chell and help the player progress through the game, but also develops the atmosphere and characterises the AI as a person. Chell is promised cake as her reward if she completes all test chambers. Chell proceeds through the empty enrichment centre, with GLaDOS as her only interaction. As the player nears completion, GLaDOS's motives and behaviour turn more sinister. Although she is designed to appear encouraging, GLaDOS's actions and speech suggest insincerity and callous disregard for the safety and well-being of the test subjects. The test chambers become increasingly dangerous as Chell proceeds, Tests including a live-fire course designed for military androids, as well as some chambers flooded with a hazardous liquid. In another chamber, GLaDOS notes the importance of the Weighted Companion Cube, a waist-high crate with a single large pink heart on each face, for helping Chell to complete the test. However, GLaDOS declares that it must be euthanized in an emergency intelligence incinerator before Chell can continue. Some later chambers include automated turrets with childlike voices, also voiced by McLean, that fire at Chell, only to sympathise with her after being destroyed or disabled. After Chell completes the final test chamber, GLaDOS manoeuvres Chell into an incinerator in an attempt to kill her. Chell escapes with the portal gun and makes her way through the maintenance areas within the enrichment centre. GLaDOS panics! and insists that she was pretending to kill Chell as part of testing. 
GLaDOS then asks Chell to assume the party escort submission position, lying face first on the ground, so that a party associate can take her to her reward, but Chell continues her escape. In this section, GLaDOS communes with Chell as it becomes clear that the AI had killed everyone else in the centre. Chell makes her way through the maintenance areas and empty office spaces behind the chambers, sometimes following graffiti messages which point in the right direction. These backstage areas, which are in an extremely dilapidated state, stand in stark contrast to the pristine test chambers. The graffiti includes statements such as The cake is a lie, and pastiches of Emily Dickinson's poem The Chariot, Henry Wadsworth Longsfellow's The Reaper and the Flowers, and Emily Bronte's No Coward Soul is Mine, referring to and mourning the death of The Companion Cube. GLaDOS attempts to dissuade Chell with threats of physical harm and misleading statements, as Chell makes her way deeper into the maintenance areas. Chell reaches a large chamber where GLaDOS's hardware hangs overhead. GLaDOS continues to threaten Chell, but during the exchange, a sphere falls off GLaDOS, and Chell drops it into an incinerator. GLaDOS reveals that Chell has just destroyed the morality core of her conscience one of the multiple personality cores that Aperture Science employees installed after the AI flooded the Enrichment Centre with neurotoxin gas. With it removed, she can access its emitters again. A six-minute countdown starts as Chell dislodges and incinerates more of GLaDOS's personality cures, while GLaDOS discourages her both verbally, with taunts and juvenile insults, and physically, by firing rockets at her. After Chell destroys the last personality core, a malfunction tears the room apart and transports everything to the surface. Chell is then seen lying outside the facility's gates amid the remains of GLaDOS. Following the announcement of Portal 2, the ending was expanded in a later update. In this retroactive continuity, Chell is dragged away from the scene by an unseen entity speaking in a robotic voice thanking her for assuming the party escort submission position. The final scene, after a long and speedy zoom through the bowels of the facility, shows a black forest cake and the weighted companion cube, surrounded by a mix of shelves containing dozens of apparently inactive personality cores. The cores begin to light up before a robotic arm descends and extinguishes the candle on the cake causing the room to black out. As the credits roll, GLaDOS delivers a concluding report, the song Still Alive, which declares the experiment to be a huge success, as well as serving to indicate to the player that GLaDOS is still alive. Section 3. Development. Section 3.1. Concept. Portal is Valve's spiritual successor to the freeware game Narbacula Drop, the 2005 independent game released by students of the DigiPen Institute of Technology. The original Narbacula Drop team was subsequently hired by Valve. Valve became interested in Narbacula Drop after seeing the game at DigiPen's annual career fair. Robin Walker, one of Valve's developers, saw the game at the fair and later contacted the team, providing them with advice and offering to show their game at Valve's offices. After their presentation, Valve's president, Gabe Newell, quickly offered the entire team jobs at Valve to develop the game further. Newell later commented that he was impressed with the DigiPen team, as they had actually carried the concept through, already having included the interaction between portals and physics, completing most of the work that Valve would have had to commit to on their own. To test the effectiveness of the portal mechanic, the team made a prototype in an in-house 2D game engine that is used in DigiPen. Certain elements have been retained from Narbacula Drop, such as the system of identifying the two unique portal ends with the colours orange and blue. A key difference in the signature portal mechanic between the two games, however, is that Portal's portal gun cannot create a portal through an existing portal, unlike in Narbacula Drop. The game's original setting, of a princess trying to escape a dungeon, was dropped in favour of the Aperture Science approach. 
Portal took approximately two years and four months to complete, after the DigiPen team was brought into Valve, and no more than ten people were involved with its development. Portal writer Eric Walpar, who, along with fellow writer Chet Felicek, was hired by Valve for the game, claimed that, without the constraints, Portal would not be as good a game. For the first year of development, the team mostly focused on the gameplay, without any narrative structure. Playtesters found the game to be fun, but asked about what these test chambers were leading towards. This prompted the team to come up with a narrative for Portal. The Portal team worked with Half-Life series writer Mark Laidlaw on fitting the game into the series' plot. This was done in part due to the limited art capabilities of the small team. Instead of creating new assets for Portal, they decided to tie the game to an existing franchise, Half-Life, to allow them to reuse the Half-Life 2 art assets. Walpaw and Felicek were put to work on the dialogue for Portal. The concept of a computer AI guiding the player through experimental facilities to test the portal gun was arrived at early in the writing process. They drafted early lines for the yet-named polite AI with humorous situations, such as requesting the player's character to assume the party escort submission position, and found this style of approach to be well suited to the game they wanted to create, ultimately leading to the creation of GLaDOS. GLaDOS was central to the plot, as Walpole notes. We designed the game to have a very clear beginning, middle and end, and we wanted GLaDOS to go through a personality shift at each of these points. Walpole further describes the idea of using cake as the reward came about as, at the beginning of the portal development process, we sat down as a group to decide what philosopher or school of philosophy our game would be based on. That was followed by about 15 minutes of silence, And then someone mentioned that a lot of people like cake. The cake element, along with additional messages given to the player in the the behind-the-scenes areas, were written and drawn by Kim Swift. Section 3.2. Design. The austere settings in the game came about because testers spent too much time trying to complete the puzzles using decorative but non-functional elements. As a result, the setting was minimised to make the usable aspects of the puzzle easier to spot, using the clinical feel of the setting in the film The Island as reference. While there were plans for a third area, an office space, to be included after the test chambers and the maintenance areas, the team ran out of time to include it. They also dropped the introduction of The Rat Man, a character who left the messages in the maintenance areas, to avoid creating too much narrative for the game though the character was developed further in a tie-in comic, Lab Rat, that ties Portal and Portal 2's story together. According to project lead Kim Swift, the final battle with GLaDOS went through many iterations, including having the player chased by James Bond lasers, which was partially applied to the turrets, Portal Combat, where the player would have needed to redirect rockets while avoiding turret fire, and a chase sequence following a fleeing GLaDOS, Eventually, they found that playtesters enjoyed a rather simple puzzle with a countdown timer near the end. Swift noted, Time pressure makes people think something is a lot more complicated than it really is. And Walpore admitted, It was really cheap to make the neurotoxin gas in order to simplify the dialogue during the battle. Chell's face and body are modelled after Elysia Glidewell, an American freelance actress and voiceover artist, selected by Valve from a local modelling agency for her face and body structure. Ellen McLean provided the voice of antagonist GLaDOS. Eric Walpole noted, When we were still fishing around for the turret voice, Ellen did a sultry version. It didn't work for the turrets, but we liked it a lot, and so a slightly modified version of that became the model for GLaDOS's final incarnation. The weighted companion cube inspiration was from project lead Kim Swift, with additional input from Walpaw from reading some declassified government interrogation thing, whereby isolation leads subjects to begin to attach to inanimate objects. Swift commented, We had a long level called Box Marathon. We wanted players to bring this box with them from the beginning to the end. But people would forget about the box, 
So we added dialogue, applied the heart to the cube and continued to up the ante until people became attached to the box. Later on, we added the incineration idea. The artistic expression grew from the gameplay. Walpole further noted that the need to incinerate the weighted companion cube came as a result of the final boss battle design. They recognised they had not introduced the idea of incineration necessary to complete the boss battle, and by training the player to do it with the weighted companion cube found the narrative way stronger with its death. Swift noted that any similarities to psychological situations in the Milgram experiment or 2001 A Space Odyssey are entirely coincidental. The portal gun's full name, Aperture Science Handheld Portal Device, can be abbreviated as ASHPD, which resembles a shortening of the name Adrian Shepard, the protagonist of Half-Life Opposing Force. Fans noticed this similarity before the game's release. As a result, the team placed a red herring in the game by having the letters of Adrian Shepard highlighted on keyboards found within the game. According to King Swift, the cake is a black forest cake that she thought looked the best at the nearby Regent Bakery and Cafe in Redmond, Washington. And as an Easter egg within the game, its recipe is scattered among various screens showing lines of binary code. The Regent Bakery has stated that since the release of the game, its black forest cake has been one of its more popular items. Section 3.3 Soundtrack most of the game's soundtrack is non-lyrical ambient music, composed by Kelly Bailey and Mike Moreski, somewhat dark and mysterious, to match the mood of the environments. The closing credits song, Still Alive, was written by Jonathan Coulton and sung by Ellen McLean, a classically trained operatic soprano, as the GLaDOS character. A brief instrumental version of Still Alive is played in an up-tempo Latin style over radios in-game. Walpole notes that Colton was invited to Valve a year before the release of Portal, though it was not yet clear where Colton would contribute. Once Kim, Swift, and I met with him, it quickly became apparent that he had the perfect sensibility to write a song for GLaDOS. The use of the song over the closing credits was based on a similar concept from the game God Hand, one of Walpole's favourite titles. The song was released as a free downloadable song for the music video game Rock Band on April the 1st, 2008. The soundtrack for Portal was released as a part of the Orange Box original soundtrack. Portal soundtrack was released as part of a four-disc retail release, Portal 2 Songs to Test By Collector's Edition, on October the 30th, 2012, featuring music from both games. The game's soundtrack became available via Steam Music on September 24th, 2014. Section 4. Release. Portal was first released as part of the Orange Box for Windows and Xbox 360 on October the 10th, 2007, and for the PlayStation 3 on December 11th, 2007. The Windows version of the game is also available for download separately through Valve's content delivery system, Steam and was released as a standalone retail product on April 9th, 2008. In addition to Portal, the box also included Half-Life 2 and its two add-on episodes, as well as Team Fortress 2. Portal's inclusion within the box was considered an experiment by Valve. Having no idea of the success of Portal, the box provided it a safety net via means of these other games. Portal was kept to a modest length, in case the game did not go over well with players. In January 2008, Valve released a special demo version titled Portal The First Slice, free for any Steam user using NVIDIA graphics hardware as part of a collaboration between the two companies. It also comes packaged with Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, Peggle Extreme and Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. The demo includes test chambers Nought Nought to 10, 11 in total. Valve has since made the demo available to all Steam users. 
Portal was the first Valve-developed game to be added on to the OS X compatible list of games available on the launch of the Steam client for Mac on May 12, 2010, supporting Steam Play, in which players that had bought the game either on a Macintosh or a Windows computer could also play it on the alternate system. As part of the promotion, Portal was offered as a free title for any Steam user during the two weeks following the Mac client's launch. Within the first week of this offer, over 1.5 million copies of the game were downloaded through Steam. A similar promotion was held in September 2011, near the start of a traditional school year, encouraging the use of the game as an educational tool for science and mathematics. Valve wrote that they felt that Portal makes physics, math, logic, spatial reasoning, probability and problem solving interesting, cool and fun. A necessary feature to draw children into learning. This was tied to Digital Promise, a United States Department of Education initiative to help develop new digital tools for education, and which Valve is part of. Portal Still Alive was announced as an exclusive Xbox Live Arcade game at the 2008 E3 convention, and was released on October 22nd, 2008. It features the original game, 14 new challenges, and new achievements. The additional content was based on levels from the map pack Portal The Flash version, created by We Create Stuff, and contains no additional story-related levels. According to Valve spokesman Doug Lombardi, Microsoft had previously rejected Portal on the platform due to its large size. Portal Still Alive was well received by reviewers. 1UP.com's Andrew Hayward stated that with the easier access and lower cost than paying for the orange box, Portal is now stronger than ever. IGN editor Cam Share ranked it fifth on his list of top ten Xbox Live arcade games. He stated that it was debatable whether an owner of the orange box should purchase this, as its added levels do not add to the plot. However, he praised the quality of the new maps included in the game. The game ranked 7th in a later list of top Xbox Live Arcade titles compiled by IGN staff in September 2010. During 2014 GPU Technology Conference on March 25, 2014, NVIDIA announced a port of Portal to the NVIDIA Shield, their Android handheld. The port was released on May 12, 2014. Section 5. Reception Metacritic 90 out of 100, 1UP.com A, Eurogamer 9 out of 10, GameSpot 9.0 out of 10, GameSpy 4.5 out of 5, and IGN 8.2 out of 10. Portal received critical acclaim, often earning more praise than either Half-Life 2 Episode 2 or Team Fortress 2, two titles also included in the orange box. It was praised for its unique gameplay and dark, deadpan humour. Eurogamer cited that the way the game progresses from being a simple set of perfunctory tasks to a full-on part of the Half-Life story is absolute genius. While GameSpy noted, what Portal lacks in length, it more than makes up for in its exhilaration. The game was criticised for sparse environments and both criticised and praised for its short length. Aggregate reviews for the standalone PC version of Portal gave the game a 90 out of 100 through 28 reviews on Metacritic. In 2011, Valve stated that Portal had sold more than 4 million copies through the retail versions, including the standalone game and the orange box, and from the Xbox Live Arcade version. The game generated a fan following for the weighted companion cube, even though the cube itself does not talk or act in the game. Fans have created plush and papercraft versions of the cube and the various turrets, as well as PC case mods and models of the portal cake and portal gun. Jeep Barnett, a programmer for Portal, noted that players have told Valve that they found it more emotional to incinerate the weighted companion cube than to harm one of the little sisters from Bioshock. Both GLaDOS and the weighted companion cube were nominated for the Best New Character Award on G4, with GLaDOS winning the award for having lines that will be quoted by gamers for years to come. Ben Croshaw of Zero Punctuation praised the game as absolutely sublime from start to finish, 
I went in expecting a slew of interesting portal-based puzzles, and that's exactly what I got. But what I wasn't expecting was some of the funniest pitch-black humour I've ever heard in a game. He felt the short length was ideal, as it did not outstay its welcome. Writing for Game Set Watch in 2009, columnist Daniel Johnson pointed out similarities between Portal and Irving Goffman's essay on dramaturgy, the presentation of self in everyday life, which equates one's persona to the front and backstage areas of a theatre. The game was also made part of the required course material, among other classical and contemporary works, including Goffman's work, for a freshman course devoted to engaging students with fundamental questions of humanity from multiple perspectives and fostering a sense of community, for Wabash College in 2010. Portal has also been cited as a strong example of instructional scaffolding that can be adapted for more academic learning situations, as the player, through careful design of levels by Valve, is first handheld in solving simple puzzles with many hints at the correct solution, but this support is slowly removed as the player progresses in the game, and completely removed when the player reaches the second half of the game. Rock Paper Shotgun's Hamish Todd considered Portal as an exemplary means of game design by demonstrating a series of chambers after the player has obtained the Portal gun that gently introduce the concept of flinging without any explicit instructions. Portal was exhibited at the Smithsonian Art Exhibition in America from February 14th through 30th of September 2012. Portal won the Action section for the platform modern windows. Since its release, Portal is still considered one of the best video games of all time, having been included on several cumulative top games of all time lists through 2018. Section 5.1 Awards Portal won several awards. At the 2008 Game Developers Choice Awards, Portal won Game of the Year Award, along with the Innovation Award and Best Game Design Award. IGN honoured Portal with several awards for Best Puzzle Game for PC and Xbox 360, Most Innovative Design for PC, and Best End Credit Song for Still Alive for Xbox 360, along with overall honours for Best Puzzle Game and Most Innovative Design. In its Best of 2007, GameSpot honoured The Orange Box with four awards in recognition of Portal, giving out honours for Best Puzzle Game, Best New Characters for GLaDOS, Funniest Game and Best Original Game Mechanic for the Portal Gun. Portal was awarded Game of the Year PC, Best Narrative PC and Best Innovation PC and Console honours by 1up.com in its 2007 editorial awards. GamePro honoured the game for Most Memorable Villain for GLaDOS in its Editor's Choice 2007 awards. Portal was awarded the Game of the Year award in 2007 by Joystick, Good Game and Shack News. The Most Original Game award by X-Play. In Official Xbox Magazine's 2007 Game of the Year Awards, Portal won Best New Character for GLaDOS, Best Original Song for Still Alive, and Innovation of the Year. In GameSpy's 2007 Game of the Year Awards, Portal was recognised as Best Puzzle Game, Best Character for GLaDOS, and Best Sidekick for The Weighted Companion Cube. The AV Club called it the Best Game of 2007, The webcomic Penny Arcade awarded Portal Best Soundtrack, Best Writing and Best New Game Mechanic in its satirical 2007 We're Right Awards. Eurogamer gave Portal first place in its Top 50 Games of 2007 rankings. IGN also placed GLaDOS from Portal as the number one video game villain on its Top 100 Villains list. Games Radar named it the best game of all time. In 2012, Time named it one of the 100 greatest video games of all time. Wired considered Portal to be one of the most influential games of the first decade of the 21st century, believing it to be the prime example of quality over quantity for video games. Section 6. Legacy 
The popularity of the game and its characters led Valve to develop merchandise for Portal, made available through its online Valve Physical Merchandise Store. Some of the more popular items were the Weighted Companion Cube plush toys and fuzzy dice. When first released, both were sold out in under 24 hours. Other products available through the Valve Store include t-shirts and Aperture Science coffee mugs and parking stickers, and merchandise relating to the phrase, the cake is a lie, which has become an internet meme. Walpore noted they did not expect certain elements of the game to be as popular as they were, while other elements that they had expected to become fads were ignored, such as a giant hoop that rolls on screen during the final scene of the game that the team had named Hoopy. A modding community has developed around Portal, with users creating their own test chambers and other in-game modifications. The group We Create Stuff created an Adobe Flash version of Portal, titled Portal the Flash version, just before the release of the Orange Box. This Flash version was well received by the community, and the group has since converted it to a map pack for the published game. Another mod, Portal Prelude, is an unofficial prequel developed by an independent team of three that focuses on the pre-GLaDOS era of Aperture Science and contains 19 additional crafty and challenging test chambers. An ASCII version of Portal was created by Joe Larson. An unofficial port of Portal to the iPhone using the Unity game engine was created but only consisted of a single room from the game. Mary O is a fan-made four-player co-op mashup of the original Super Mario Bros. and Portal. Swift stated that the future Portal developments would depend on the community's reactions, saying, We're still playing it by ear at this point, figuring out if we want to do multiplayer next, or Portal 2, or release map packs. Some rumours regarding a sequel arose due to casting calls for voice actors. On March 10th, 2010, Portal 2 was officially announced for a release late in that year. The announcement was preceded by an alternate reality game based on unexpected patches made to Portal that contained cryptic messages in relation to Portal 2's announcement, including an update to the game, creating a different ending for the fate of Chell. The original game left her in a deserted parking lot after destroying GLaDOS, but the update involved Chell being dragged back into the facility by a party escort bot. Though Portal 2 was originally announced for a Q4 2010 release, the game was released on April 19th, 2011. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash 3.0.